Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Hurry. We can't miss the monorail. Make way. Coming through. Keep pushing. I'm doing my best. Ah, wait a minute. One of the wheels fell off again. I'll get it while I hold him up. Okay, okay. I got it. Here, here. Let me slip it back on. Hurry. Excuse me, conductor? Yeah? Is this the monorail to Kansas? Sure is. Better get on board, though. But you know, uh, you, you should have checked your cargo. <laughs> this ain't cargo. It's a B-2. A what? A B-2. Whoa! What is that? Is that a man? Is, is he alive? That, sir, is a B-2 boxing robot. Wow. He sure looks real. Yeah, he looks even better in the ring when we activate him. Westbound monorail will be departing on track 10 in one minute. Uh, conductor, we bought a ticket for him. Uh, here you go. He's fighting tonight. We have to keep an eye on him so he doesn't get damaged. Well, he's got a ticket, so, uh, so get him on board. We're pulling out. Sure thing. Okay, I got this end. Okay, ready? One, two, three, lift. Come on. <clears throat> Oh, How much does this guy weigh? Oh. Oh. Ah, next time, let's get a lightweight instead of a light heavyweight. <laughs> All aboard! Here's our seats, C11 through 13. Let's sit him down in the window seat. He gets the window seat? Get him seated. Hey, you hear him squeaking? Not only is he saying he doesn't want the window seat, he's saying he doesn't want to sit down, period. He needs his silicone teflonic joint lubricant changed. We'll pick up some as soon as we get paid. Well, first we gotta find some. Shouldn't be no problem. I told you, they don't make it anymore. Well, that's crazy. Still plenty of B2s in the business. Name one. This one. We'll find some. <sighs> All right. Wow. Sure is hot. It'll be hotter where we're going. Wish I had a beer. Well, it wouldn't do you any good. I already had three, and I'm still thirsty. Not an XO. He don't need a thing. Never complains. Then, uh, why does he squeak so much? You think he'll be all right? Yeah, if he doesn't get hit. Can it, Paul? Hey, come on, no use glaring at me, Steel. You know he's shot. That ain't true. A little overhaul is all he needs. Well, yeah, a little ten grand overhaul with parts they don't make anymore. <laughs> when you talk, you think he's ready for the scrap heap. Ain't he? No, he ain't. Just because he's a little old? Well, try ancient. Plenty of fight left in him. Well, you think he's okay or not? Steel. I don't know. And that's a fact. He needs work. Like what? Well, for starters, the trigger in his left arm. 
It's been rewired so many times it's just about had it. He's got no protection left on that side. Plus, his eye lens is cracked. Leg cables are worn out, no tension left in him. Even his gyro's off, not to mention he needs silicone teflonic joint lubricant. We'll get him some. Where? I'll find it. <sighs> yeah, after the fight. What about during? He'll be creaking around that ring like, like an antique steam shovel. This ain't 1940, it's 2040. It'd be a miracle if he goes two rounds. It ain't that bad, Bo. Actually, it's worse. Wait till the promoter gets a load of battling Maxo from Philadelphia. We'll be lucky to get monorail fare back home. The contract is signed. You can't back out. Well, the contract is for battling Maxo in fighting shape. Not this bucket of antique hardware. Just you wait. Maxo's gonna do all right. Against the B-7? It's just an experimental B-7. It ain't got the bugs worked out yet. That's why they took a bout with us. Well, after tonight, battling Maxo's new nickname will be One Round Maxo. That's enough. He's been doing okay for five years, and he'll keep doing okay. So what if he needs a little work? So what? If he wins some money, we can get him all the silicone teflonic lubricant he needs, and a new trigger for his left arm, and new leg cables, and everything. He's gonna do all right, you'll see. Maxo's gonna do just fine. Sports item from the not-too-distant future. Battling Maxo, B2, light heavyweight, accompanied by his manager and handler on his way to Maynard, Kansas for a scheduled 10-round bout. Battling Maxo is a robot, or to be exact, an android, resembling a human being. Only androids have been permitted in the ring since prize fighting was legally abolished. This is the story of that 10-round bout. More specifically, the story of two men shortly to face the remorseless truth that no law can be passed to abolish cruelty or desperate need, or, for that matter, blind animal courage. Location for the facing of said truth? A small, smoke-filled arena just this side of the Twilight Zone. The Twilight Zone and our story... Steel, starring Lou Gossett Jr. with Stacy Keach as your narrator. You were right. It is out of here. Told you. Hey, fellas, need a taxi? Uh, thanks, pal, but uh, no thanks. Oh, come on, where are you headed? Stadium. The stadium? That's six miles away. You can't push that thing that far. He's right. I told you, we ain't got the dough. Ooh-wee, what is that thing? Boxing robot. Oh, man. He is something. I've never seen one up close. Come on. I'll drive you to the stadium for free. It's on my way. You want a hand with it? Careful. He's got a bum wheel on the bottom. Uh, He's real heavy. Oh, Oh, boy. This is a real honor taking a fighter to the stadium. Well, thanks. Hey. Which robot is that? This is battling Maxo from Philly. Maybe you heard of him? Uh, no, but, you know, I'm no expert. He was almost light heavyweight champ once. No kid. Yes, sir. You ever heard of Dimsy the Rock? Uh, don't think Steve. so. Why don't you give it a rest? Dimsy was number three in the light heavy ranks, on his way to the top. Well, my boy took him out in the fourth round. Left cross, bang. Almost put Dimsy to the ropes. It was beautiful. No kid. Yeah. Used to be in the game myself. Night heavy. Before they passed the law, called me Steel Kelly because I never got knocked down. Not once. I was number nine in the ranks before the outlawed human boxers. Wow. That's something. Anyway, tonight is going to be a good fight. Driver, uh, have you ever seen a fighter from here called The Flash? Oh, yeah, you bet. Man, that is one good fighter. One seven straight, he's riding a bullet to the top of the rankings. 
You just wait. Matter of fact, he's he's fighting tonight, too. They're bringing in some heat from uh, back east to fight. Flesh is gonna slaughter him. Oh, where'd you guys say you were from? Philly. Oh, oh, man, you're not. We are. Oh, look, I didn't mean nothing. I didn't know. Skip it. Forget it, pal. Doesn't matter. You're right. Why don't you shut your trap for once? Look, fellas, I'm sorry. Well, you guys need anything else? Anything. Do you know where we can get some silicone teflonic joint lubricant? So, oh, <laughs> do they still make that stuff? No, they don't. Uh, just trying to be funny. They haven't made it in years. Hey, look, they got the fight card posted for tonight. You guys are the third fight out of seven. Woo! Your fighter must be pretty good. Oh, the Maynard Flash, B7, versus Battling Maxo, B2. You got a B2? Yeah. Well, uh, at least you're not at the bottom of the card. We do have that going for us. Drop it, Paul. You'll see. You'll all see. It's nothing personal, Kelly. It's just the way it is. Well, It'd be a miracle if he wins. Hey, hey, if he does, can I have his autograph? Sure thing. Thanks for the lift. Good luck, fellas. You're gonna need it. Steel, you know, Maxo's not programmed to sign autographs, right? I know. Let's roll him inside. The wheel fell off again. I, I, I got it. I got it. Keep pushing. Put it back on. Well, what's the point? Put it back on. The office is just down the hall. I want Maxwell to make a good first impression. Well, let's just hope his head don't fall off next. Keep quiet and let me do all the talking. Oh, spare me. We don't have a chance. No way he's going to win this fight. Shh. Keep your voice down. It's simple engineering, that's all. Maxo will be lucky to get out of the ring with his head on. Bull! It's an experimental B7. It's probably full of bugs, full of them. They always are. That's why they take a first fight in the middle of nowhere. We've got a chance. Yeah. Yeah, sure we do. Remember, keep your mouth shut. Yeah! Mr. Nolan? Nah, I'm Oscar. Mr. Nolan will be back in a couple of minutes. I'm still Kelly, battling Maxo's owner. Oh, yeah, I heard of you. You were one of the last human fighters. Hmm. This is Paul, Maxo's mechanic. Hi. It was getting late. We were wondering if you'd make it. Never missed a fight. Yeah, pull up a chair. I got some paperwork to do. Thanks. What was that? It was this folding chair. Uh, okay. Sign on all the X's. You heard of my fighter, Mr. Oscar? What's his name? Battling Maxo. You must have heard about him. Can't say as I have. He knocked out Dimsy the Rock, a ranked fighter in his prime. Uh-huh. Yeah, sign here, too. It was all in the East Coast papers. New York, Boston, Philly. Got quite a spread. Biggest upset of the year. Good. Initial here. And here. Get a couple more here. Right here. And over there. He's a B2, you know. That's the second model Mauling put out. The B2 is one of the best fighters they ever built. The best, in my opinion. Maxwell is still going strong. I don't go for these new ones, you know. The ones made out of steel, aluminum with all the doodads. Too flimsy. Nothing solid. Now, nah, Mauling don't make them like Maxo anymore. Oscar, who are these guys? Mr. Nolan, I'm Steel Kelly, and this is... Is that your fighter? Yes, sir. Battling Maxo. Fighter in shape? You bet. Prime condition. Paul, my mechanic here, is a Class A mechanic, and he took Maxo apart and put him back together just before we left Philly. Oscar, cigar me. Yes, sir. Ain't you forgetting something? Huh? Like me. Oh, yes, sir.
You know, Steel, you were lucky to get this, Bowers. We ain't staged a bout with nothing less than a B4 in... Must be two years now. The fighter we had scheduled got run over by a truck in a loading dock at a stadium in Detroit. I needed somebody on short notice. So that's the only reason you're here. You got nothing to worry about, Mr. Nolan. My fight is in shape. He's the one that knocked out Dimsey the Rock in Madison Square Garden a few years ago. Maybe you... I just want a good fight. And you'll get it. Maxwell's in top shape. No first round knockout. No, no, nothing like that. People pay to see action. Do you have a prep room we could use? We want to check him over and make sure he's perfect. Down the hall, third door on the right, next to the janitor's closet. Thanks. Your bout is at nine. Got it. You won't be sorry, Mr. Nolan. I don't like guys that are late. Understood. Poe, let's get Maxo to his prep room. Uh, Mr. Nolan... I was wondering... I know what you're wondering. You get your money after you deliver a good fight, not before. Uh, no problem. We'll get him ready. And steal. Yeah? Don't slam the door. I hate loud noises. Come on. I'm coming. Oh, my stomach hurts. Don't be scared. It'll be okay. Oh, I ain't scared. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten all day. I can think of food at a time like this. This one counts. It's our chance for a comeback. We've got to get him in that room. And we've got to check him out real good. What time is it? I'm busy pushing. Come on, check your own watch. I don't have a watch anymore. I had to pawn it. The one your wife gave you? Ex-wife. Hey, look, uh, we got two hours before the bout begins. Have we got time for a sandwich? I want you to check him out real good. His arm... His gyro, everything. What for? Did you hear me? Yeah, but I work better on a full stomach. You get to work, I'll get you a sandwich. Max is gonna take that B7, but good. We got a big crowd out there tonight. Now, what took you so long, Steel? I'm starving. Here's your sandwich. How's Maxo? Maxo is still big as life and twice as ugly. I cleaned him up a little, though. The V2s always looked real. Look at him. You'd swear he was real, wouldn't you? He's got that natural-looking flesh, great muscle tone. He could have been a male model if he wasn't a fighter. Come on, get to it. Well, outwardly, he hasn't aged a bit. His hair is still curly. <laughs> Just like mine. Yeah, but he's got a little bit more than you do. Hey. When I had him made, they gave him my good looks. Mm. <laughs> That's a matter of opinion. Quit stalling. So what's the good news? Well, that was the good news. And, uh, well, I also turned his power source on, and that's still good. So I ran a diagnostic check. And? And everything that was bad when we left Philly is still bad. There's got to be something we can do. Open him up again. All right, all right. Uh, let me let me power him up first, so so we can walk over to the table. He's too heavy. Okay, come on. Head up, boy. There you go. All right. Okay. Here, help me get him up on the table. Uh, <sighs> that's my boy. The doctor will see you now. Lift his arm. What's all that corrosion around the excess panel? Dried sweat. All the B2s sweat like bulls. It's nothing to worry about, though. You hear that, Maxo? Nothing to worry about. We'll get you cleaned up. Hand me that probe. Well? Well, all electronic systems are functional. Huh. Well, I hope the circuit board doesn't blow. Why should it? Well, uh, if you recall, he got knocked out of the ring in the last fight eight months ago. It jarred all his electronic systems. The connections are all still operational, but, boy, I wish I had more time to manually double-check the connections. Well, you don't have time. 
Sometimes you just have to suck it up and have some faith in your fighter. All right, then. Okay. Well, I activated all his systems. Keep your fingers crossed. And just hope nothing blows. See, his breathing sounds good. His arms are creaky, but uh, they'll quiet down when he warms up. Look, beads of sweat are forming on his forehead. I told you these were good sweaters. Can you hear me, Max? Relax, boy. Let him warm up good, Paul. I'll tell you, the, the mechanical part is what worries me. I need to check his reflexes. Uh, look, Steel, go put on the gloves, will ya? Let's see if, uh, if he can zero in on you, okay? Maxo, get your legs loosened up. Move around a little. Loosen up your jab, big boy. Don't rush him. If it don't work now, it won't work in the ring. All right. But just enough to check the jab. Set his controls so he doesn't count a punch. Good idea. Okay, hold still, Maxo. This won't hurt a bit. Okay. That's as low as it'll go. I, I don't think your systems like it, though. You know, if that cracked eye quits, he'll be very vulnerable. Hey, look, Steel, start circling him and see if he can follow you. Come on, Nexo. Look at me. I'm moving in. I want to get you. Block my punch. Oh, man, they're gonna hear that in the back row. That's good enough for now. We know it works. Oh, Steel, he's gonna get more than one punch thrown at his head. He'll outdance him to keep clear. Give him more power to his legs. Those cables are bandy. I, I don't like doing this. There's not much tension left in him. He seems to be moving all right. Yeah, but, boy, a heavy wind might knock him over. Put him on automatic. Oh, no, 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 come on. Let's not push our luck. Do it. All right. Here goes nothing. Maxo, gloves up. That's it. Beautiful. Now, let's see if he can move in for the kill. Kelly, Steel, no. Leave his systems on defense. He might have a couple of rounds if we leave him on defense. It, it takes less energy. No. He's gonna get beat to pieces if we let him move in. No, do it. Will you use your head? He's a B2. He's gonna get slaughtered anyway. Look, if we let him go on defense, we might be able to salvage him for pieces. Nolan paid to see him on offense. It's in the contract. Activate his jab. Come on, it doesn't have any lubricant in it. Do as I say. All right. Activating the jab. <laughs> Shut him down! What did you do? What did I do? I told you to take it easy. It was on the lowest setting. I told you to check the arm. What's the matter with you? So help me if you broke that arm. If I broke it? Yeah, what you can do. Steel, you know, try finding another mechanic that could have kept this antique working as long as I have. I dare you to. Please, see what you can do. Hold the arm up. Oh, man. The trigger spring came right off. Can you reattach it? I'll try to stretch it. Oh. Oh, nuts. Oh. Oh. Well. That's that. Oh, uh, no. One jab too many. Uh, we, we gotta do something. What? F fix it. I can't. You, you, you just can't fix a spring. Once it can't spring, it ain't a spring no more. I told you it was getting ready to break and to get a new one last year. He's got to be fixed if he's going out there, and he has to go out there. They fronted me the monorail fare. Steel. He needs a new spring. 
Nothing else will work. Well, can't you get another spring? Where? They don't make them anymore. It's a special spring. I can't just take one off a washing machine or something. Quiet. Yeah? Ten minutes! Something wrong? Oscar, can you make up about the one after the next one? Sorry, pal. No can do. Uh, right. Well, then, I, I guess that means that we'll have to hurry. You heard the man? I heard him, but it's over. We're finished. No, we're not. There must be a way. What? Sell them for scrap and get a couple of monorail tickets? We hung in there as long as we could, but this is it. I have to hand it to you, Steele. You wouldn't give up. Quiet. I'm thinking. There is one way it just might work. What might work? If they don't watch the fights... Who? Nolan and Oscar. Maybe they don't even come out of their office. What are you talking about? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no! You can't do this! Get the trunks and robe off Maxo. I'll change my clothes. Steel, you are out of your mind! You can't go into a ring against a B-7! I... I used to be pretty good. I can get through a couple of rounds. Just bob and weave, throw a punch every once in a while. You'll get killed! You heard that, Tub. We deliver a fight or we don't get paid. Steel, come on. You're never gonna get away with this. They won't let you. Who's gonna stop me? You, you can't make them think you're... Steel, for God's sake! I can if you help me. Nobody here knows what Maxo looks like. If Nolan and the other guys don't watch the bout, we'll be all right. Steel... The crowd won't have a clue. Be too sweat, bleed, and bruise just like the new ones. But you're gonna get killed, Steel. Then I'll get killed. Better me than you, right? I got us in this mess. I'll get us out of it. Get there, heap otter! You heard the boss. Lace my gloves up tight. We gotta fight. That's it, Paul. Tie him off tight. Oh, you really want to go through with this? Yes. Let's go. How do I look? Like a broken down old fighter. So I'll pass for a B2? That's what I said. You look like a broken down old fighter. Here. Let me, uh, let me put a towel around your neck. Pull up the hood on my robe, too. I'll keep my head down so they can't see my face. You better do that in the ring, too. Let's go. Let me know when we get to the stairs. I got sweat in my eyes. Okay, first step. Careful, Steel. Grab my waist. Wipe my eyes. Can't see my feet. Gee, Steel. You're already sweating like a pig. You'll have to tell me off between rounds, just like a real B2. Between what rounds? You won't last long. Whose side are you on? Steel, you're not up against some punch-drunk fighter. You're up against a machine. I said shut up. Okay, Steel, here's the ring. Two steps to the apron. I can see them. Okay, I'm gonna pull the ropes apart. Hey, send them back to the junkyard! Ladies and gentlemen, the next contest of the evening, a 10-round light heavyweight bout featuring out of Philadelphia, the B2 Battle in Maxo! I'm gonna take your rope off now. Keep looking at your shoes, try not to blink. Stay in my corner. And now, entering the ring, his opponent, our own B7, the pride of Kansas, the Maynard Flash! What's he doing? He's jumping up and down on his toes. I never saw a robot do that before. 
Must be a new gimmick. Big deal. Well, this ain't kickboxing, so he's not scaring me. You should be scared, Steel. Come on, get out of the ring now while you still can. You get out, pal. See you at the end of the round. Steel, stay away from him. And there's the bell. The fighters come out of their corners quickly. They size each other up. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, the flash landed a vicious right. Ooh, and another. Uh, and another. Come on, get away from him. Get away from him. Maxwell backs away. Come on, I got money on this fight. Come on, I can take it. The Flash is the aggressor. He backs Maxo into the ropes. Hey, no holding. Get your V2 off the ropes. See how you like this. Bring it, you bum. I can take it. Oh. There's thunder in those punches. Your mother's scrap metal. Maxo, backpedal. The Flash swings wildly. If he lands one of those, he'll take Maxo's head off. The Flash is coming in for the kill. Whoa. That one was lethal. Stop the fight. Come on, somebody stop him. Stop him. Oh. Maxo is down. It's over. It's over. It's over. Come on, stay down. It's over. Just get me up. I've never been knocked down. I'm Steel Kelly. In the time of one minute and 22 seconds of the first round, your winner, the Maynard Flash! Ah, that's it, haul him out of here. Move it! Is he broken or what? No, 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 he's okay. Just a second, okay? Steel, can you stand? Come on, talk to me. Are you bleeding? Put the towel over my face. Yeah. Sure. Get the robe. The what? The robe. I'm gonna walk out of here like a man. Come on, before they start throwing things. Let me help you up on the table. Come on. Here we go. Sit. Come on. Steel, I'm gonna try and get you some ice. Forget it. But your eye. It'll be all right. I think right now you need a good stick man instead of a mechanic. That eye looks terrible. Actually, I, I, I think you need a doctor. Oh, man, you are really a mess. Go get the money. But I can't leave you... Now. Here. All right, all right, all right. Look, uh, but just, just... Lie down. I, I don't even try to move. Okay, I'll, I'll be. I'll be right back. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Nolan. Over that quick, huh? Yeah, I guess. Uh, Maxo did the best he could, though, Mr. Nolan. Your strategy didn't work. Did you really think arriving in the ring late would upset a robot? <laughs> well, you never know. Uh, but that B7, it must have been tweaked or something. I, I never saw anything like that. Me neither, and I hope I never do again. Get your boy and clear out. Yeah, we will. Only first... You heard the boss. Well, you see, my boss Hiding said... out, huh? Don't even want to show his face. <sighs> Something like that. Come here. What? Mr. Nolan says you should come over to the desk. Okay. I want you to deliver something to your boss. Yeah? Piece of advice. Can you handle that? Yes. Now listen real close. Yeah. 
You get it? Steel. Well? Here. Is this all he gave you? Where's the rest? Well, it's what he gave me. This is just enough for monorail fare back to Philly. Well, he said he wouldn't pay for a one-rounder. I'll go in there. You can't. If he sees you, he'll know what you've done. But the contract says... I'm supposed to deliver a message to you, too. He said to tell you. You're lucky he doesn't run us out of town on a monorail. And if you ever show your face in town again, he said you won't be so lucky the next time. Help me up. Just, just stay seated. I'll, I'll get you a drink of water. I don't need water. That's all there is. Look, we gotta get that wrist set. I, I can make you sling. For now, just try not to move it. We'll go back by bus. By bus? Come on, you're not listening to me. Look, just, just hold still. If we go by bus, we'll save money. We'd have enough to get Maxo a, a new trigger spring and a, and a lens for his eye and some silicone teflonic joint lubricant. He'll be good as new again. <laughs> all right, Steel. Anything you say. Then we'll be all set. Maxo will be in shape again and, and we can get us some, some decent bouts. Uh, that's all he needs. A little work, huh? That'll shape him up. We'll show him what a top B2 can do. Old Max will show him. He'll show everybody. Right? Right? <laughs> sure, Steel. Sure. Now let's, uh, let's get out of here. Take it slow. I can walk. I know you can. You're a tough guy. But put your hand on my shoulder. That's it. Don't worry about Max. I can pull. Portrait of the Losing Side. Proof positive that you can't outpunch machinery. Proof also of something else. That no matter what the future brings, man's capacity to rise to the occasion will remain unaltered. His potential for tenacity and optimism continues, as always, to outfight, outpoint, and outlive any and all changes made by his society. For which three cheers and a unanimous decision rendered in the Twilight Zone. Steel, starring Lou Gossett Jr. with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and Joe B. Cerny, and written for the Twilight Zone by Richard Matheson. Heard in the cast were Joe B. Cerny, Danny Goldring, Rich Komenich, Sam Derrance, Pat Fraley, Tim Dadavo, and Jennifer Joy. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Joe B. Cerny for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. I shall never look at robot wars the same way again. And we'll be flinging open the doors of the Twilight Zone once again at the same time next week with a tale of a woman who is terrified by what lurks outside her basement apartment in Nothing in the Dark. BBC Radio 4 Extra. The Seventh Dimension. Okay, so now it's time for the next part of 